If you're enjoying the content, as usual, please consider visiting my Patreon uh, linked at the bottom of the screen. Welcome back, Artificers, to the second part of a six-part series on painting different metals and different treatments of metal. Today, we'll be working on uh, a painted and chipped paint metal. Um, you'll see that this forms the mainstay of most of my uh, armies and most of my painting techniques will appear in this uh, treatment. So, uh, where was I? I'll be um, priming um, the part in black. Uh, so you may want to prime in white in certain cases if you're doing very light colored armor for Im imperial fists or white scars, you have your yellows and, and your whites. Um, in my case, I will be doing sort of a reddish vermilion armor, um, simply to show the contrast between the armor and the shining metal underneath. So what I want to do is paint uh, this miniature, uh, this component, in the typical way that I would with that specific color. So you can see that I'm done applying a couple thin coats of my base color and I'm happy with the results so far. What I want to do now is then apply a wash. And if you do skip forward in this video, which uh, some of you do, then what you want to remember is that I'm only applying a wash, as in I'm only applying the dark tones to this base color and none of the highlights or dry brushing or light tones that you would usually apply uh, on a model because that comes later. Uh, so what I'll be doing with this particular color is applying a Reichland flesh shade and then after that a few key elements will be picked out with known oil. So now I've done my shading uh, techniques on the component that I want to paint. I'm just going to let this dry and what I'm going to do next is do the uh, metal chips. So now with my known oil set, what I want to do is grab myself a sponge and you know the typical sponge that I usually want to use is something that uh, has a much more ragged edge so you want to take tweezers or you use your hands and pick off chunks of the sponge to give yourself a very fairly ragged edge um, and you, you want to take your sponge you want to put it in storm host silver uh, again as in the last time I'm not using your Necron compound dry paint because this isn't dry brushing this is actually uh, sort of a painting technique so you want your paint to be typically wet and, and not to uh, not to dry now I'm taking this ragged edge, I just dabbed it slightly on, on a cloth. Now what I want to do is then take that paint and just achieve sort of an effect like that all over my miniature in sort of a very frugal, not, not too crazy fashion and achieve sort of a paint chipping in that style so you can see paint being chipped off like that already and just strategically place those chips wherever you wish you know usually on the leading edges and the corners of your of your miniature where erosion of the paints would typically occur and I'm going to let this dry nice and dry before I go on to the next step. Now with your silver nice and dry, what you want to do is uh, make all these paint chips start to pop because what you've actually done is applied a silver layer 
on top of your paint. And that's not going to look like the paint has peeled away revealing silver underneath. That's just going to look like you painted silver over your paint. Now to give the illusion that you have chipped paint, what you want to do is on the upper edge of the silver, you want to have a slight shadow, meaning that the paint is casting a shadow on the silver underneath it, even though the opposite is actually true. Now what, how you want to do that is, you want to grab a shade color, um, something slightly darker than your base color, I'm using a brown. If you're using cooler colors, you want to go with a deep blues, um, or if you're using, you know, lighter colors, you want to use some grays. So you don't have to pick out each and every little paint chip, just the largest ones and sort of put an outline over the top of it. Imagine a um, spotlight coming down from the top, casting a harsh shadow down on top of all your, on top of all your paint chips and then causing the layer on top to darken the metal underneath. You don't have to be too neat about it. Just a couple of indications of where shadows are being cast will actually make your model kind of pop a lot more. We always want to talk about the dynamic range of the treatments. So having those lights and darks on your paint is going to make it look a lot more dynamic. So in this section, I'm imagining the light coming from the top of your screen. Uh, so all the shadows are going to be on the top edge of these chips. So you don't want to load your brush with too much paint. You do want to keep the most of the bristles, the entire length of the bristle, uh, wet with paint. Not all the way to into your stem, but um, you want to keep your brush loaded with paint in most of the bristles, but not overloaded such that it starts to bubble out and swell up. But this is going to give you of sort of a smooth flow of paint out to the tip as you use the tip of your brush just to add those dark portions. Now you can see what I'm doing. I'm, I tend to stipple a little bit to add, uh, to get the paint to flow. That's perfectly fine too. Um, if you find that stippling with your brush gives you a better flow of the paint, by all means do that. you also notice that I've um, traded in my lighter brown with a slightly darker one. Um, in the transition so that I can achieve more contrast. Again, we want to have that range of light uh, and dark. And here we are, we've got sort of dark, 
darkness along the top edge of our paint chips, what we're going to follow up with is a bit of highlight along the bottom of the paint chips and we'll uh, pair that along with the uh, highlighting of the model proper as well. Just going to add a little bit of dimension up here as well since I forgot to do it. So now we're going to add some uh, highlights along the bottom edge of each paint chip using a lighter shade of whatever I had uh, before. So here uh, we are. And with our chipped paint showing metal underneath. Now, if you want to do a couple of more uh, deliberate gashes of metal, here's how you do it. And this is slowly becoming sort of almost a signature style for me, where using sort of a fine brush as a double zero or a triple zero, you get it loaded with um, your undercolor, possibly silver, in my case, Stormhole Silver, and you pull out a couple of large, nice, solid streaks, like so. And they don't all have to be going in the same direction. I can have a couple going this way as well, like that. Probably I'll do one more right on the top for good measure. Makes a good example as well. See what we have there. And what I want to do now is the exact same uh, dark and light effect with the dark line near the top, like so. Again, with my fine brush, look for that top edge of your scratch and add a shadow. Like so. One for the top as well. Sometimes you can have your shadow darker on the edge and sometimes you can do this with the shadow darker in the middle. Now with your lighter color. with that line along the bottom. And here we are. Nice, um, simple to do painted metal technique and a little bit of chipping to show the metal underneath. You can apply this to show the undercoat of paint underneath. Sometimes a nice contrasting color of paint underneath actually shows up quite nice, especially for factions like the Tau. Uh, but typically what I usually do is take that sponge and go underneath with that silver treatment. So here, is the effect that you achieve at the end and you can go finer uh, with your brushes you can go down and really outline those those chips or you can just only do the scratches uh, using that brush or you can just leave them out entirely it's up to you and also 
uh, in this example I did have quite a lot of chipping but if you don't want to that's up to you as well you don't have to add this much weathering to your weathered paint um, I do hope you are enjoying this series and please like and subscribe to make sure that you are notified when the next part of this series comes out where I'll be showing you how, how to uh, where I'll be showing you how to paint a polished uh, metal effect instead uh, again if you are enjoying these videos please consider visiting my patreon linked below and as always take care bye bye